In today's video, I am going to be telling you all about why I quit coffee after drinking it for over a decade. And you know what? I don't miss it one bit. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Oh, we're joined today by Magni, my little German spitz who turned two the other day. Say hello. So I've been drinking coffee probably for the last decade. I wouldn't say I was like a massive coffee drinker, but I would have at least one or two shots every single day. That's what I use for pre-workout for the gym also. I didn't, I've never touched like pre-workout supplements, so really caffeine for me was my go-to. My coffee of choice was always a long black. And you know, we had an AeroPress and we bought our own beans. Um, and so we had coffee at home. I'd definitely say it was weaker than what you would get at a cafe, but still, I was probably having about one to two shots every day. And then about a year ago, I read the book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Highly recommend if you haven't read it before. And it really started to make me question my daily habitual patterns especially where I tend to be on autopilot. Like, where am I being too comfortable? Where am I doing things just for the sake of doing them? And really, the only thing that came up for me was coffee. It really had become more than a habit, it was an addiction. And even though I wasn't drinking that much, it was kind of like, you know, I don't drink alcohol and I don't smoke, and so this, for me, was really my only vice. I started to become aware of Every time I drank coffee, how was I actually feeling? I started to question myself. I didn't have a certain amount of time that I was gonna quit for, I was just gonna quit and see how long it lasted. Let me tell you, the withdrawal from coffee, even though I was only having like one shot a day, was horrific. The first time I tried, I just went cold turkey. So I went from like two shots to nothing. And <laughs> the migraines, wow. I literally couldn't function. It took probably about two to three weeks for me to really get it out of my system. I mean, after the fact of getting it out of my system that I realized how detrimental it had been to my health, my well-being, and really my mental health. So here's my experience coming off coffee and what improvements I actually saw. Also, if you're interested on how I weaned myself off coffee and what I drank instead to kind of get me through those two, three weeks, let me know in the comments below, I can make another video. Number one, this is the first thing that I noticed and actually really shocked me, was how it eliminated anxiety for me completely. I am not someone who thought I had anxiety in the first place. I've never uh, been clinically treated, I've never taken medications, I've never suffered from anxiety or depression. But when I came off coffee, it really made me, in retrospect, be able to see how badly it affected my mental health. And, and for that reason alone, I don't think I'll ever go back onto coffee. Also, by the way, it's caffeine we're talking about here, and caffeine is in many things. It's not just in coffee. It's in teas, it's in chocolates, it's in certain medications. So it's very hard to avoid completely. And, you know, I'm not gonna stop eating chocolate once in a while, because, hello, chocolate. But just eliminating coffee has made a huge difference. The thing with caffeine is that it messes with your hormones, specifically cortisol, which is the stress hormone. Now, if you already have issues with your adrenals, I recommend that you stay away from caffeine altogether. The issue is when you are chronically spiking your cortisol, your stress hormone, and you go into that fight or flight response, which is your sympathetic nervous system. It activates the limbic part of your brain, which is all about survival and protection and and alludes to the negative emotions of fear and jealousy and paranoia. That also can lead to very poor decision making. And so the wider benefit of coming off caffeine and particularly coffee is that you can also really improve your sense of well-being and also how you relate to other people. And that of course is going to have a knock-on effect into every area of your life. So it's only really a win-win. I just found for me that I had this like low level in the background kind of static noise, this kind of like constant anxiety where um, it was very subtle and, you know, like I said, I've never suffered from panic attacks or anything like that, but once 
the caffeine was out of my system, that just disappeared and I was left feeling so much calmer and more grounded and centered. And this is coming from someone who meditates every day, does yoga regularly, and has a really strong mindfulness practice. So it shocked me just how much caffeine was hindering that. Hi guys, didn't see you there. <laughs> it's Shelby, your favorite fitness influencer. <laughs> um, back again with another video. And today's video is sponsored by... <laughs> Not a pre-workout, no? Protein powder? No? Waist trainer, one of those, you know. <gasps> no. Oh. Uh, was oh the strong curves the app like finally went live <laughs> cardio lots and lots of cardio no 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 cardio that's new oh wait at home sold <laughs> <clears throat> yeah let's not do things like shelby okay by the way, why is everyone doing this viral trend of eating sliced cucumbers as if they're actually a filling snack? Seriously, that does not look appetizing. You guys must be literally starving. Ugh, please, Shelby, as if you feel full of half a cucumber slice. And don't even get me started on the rice crackers. Ooh, pairing it with tuna, groundbreaking. Oh, and what's this? Another boring, healthy salad? Ugh, this is so, so sad. Girl, cram your river. Oh, and here we go. No generic app is complete without pushing useless processed supplements onto you. Why, oh why, must we drink so many protein shakes? Yeah, look, I don't blame you. You're just hangry, constantly. Oh, the fake healthy foods. Honestly, there's nothing healthy about an acai bowl. It's just glorified sugar bombs that you convince yourself is healthy because it's topped with a kiwi slice and it says low fat on the package. And this is why you sneak into the kitchen at 9pm and devour that jar of cookies because you are sugar addicted and undernourished. Okay, enough of that. Let me show you inside the Strong Curves web app. Right now, we've got a soft launch promotion running for the beta phase of the app, meaning you guys get a sweet discount while we expand and improve your experience. Currently, it's a web app, like a membership site. So it works off your browser on any device. And we've made it mobile responsive, so it'll look and feel as close to an app as possible. You can stream the 12 Week Strong Curves Home Workout Program straight onto your TV and follow along with me as we both cry and laugh and sweat our way to building an epic booty. And if you liked my lockdown workouts, you're going to love this app. But don't worry, there's plenty more workouts coming, including one for the gym, beginners, full body, booty building, and lots more when the app is released for iOS and Android in a few months' time. There's also yoga sequences for recovery, hundreds of healthy whole food recipes, i.e. no calorie counting or restrictive diets here. By the way, you must try my cauliflower falafel with the tahini dip or my other favorite, baked eggs and zucchini bread. So good. There's also a forum where you can connect with other Strong Curves ladies and you can find accountability buddies and get support. I'm super active in there if you ever have a question too. And you can set your goals and track your progress on your profile. So we've got an eight week challenge opening up for enrollment now. You've got a week to get on board before we close the doors. So go to the link in the description below and join the web app with 25% lifetime discount. Yes for life. Okay, back to the video. Basically, what I drink more of now is my infamous liquid gold bone broth. You can watch this video here to learn how I make it. I call it better than Botox because, hello, skin, hair, nails, the whole shebang. Get on it. So I've just made a new batch here. You can see how gelatinous that is. Look at that. 
my broth don't jiggle jiggle. And so yeah, this is what I drink instead. Far better for me. And I make sure that I put in my um, electrolytes, which if you've seen my best supplements for women, my updated video, you can watch it here. Uh, these are my electrolyte salts that I pretty much put on everything. And I'll have a little teaspoon of that with my broth. And this really is what gives me my energy now in the morning. It's incredible how much better I feel swapping my caffeine pre-workout for actually just replenishing my electrolytes, which is pretty much why I was feeling so tired in the mornings and needed that pick-me-up. Much healthier, this is what your body needs. Healthy bone broth and electrolyte salts. And that leads on to the next benefit of quitting coffee, which is better skin and digestion. So as I pour my lovely fresh batch of bone broth here, this is something that not only is it really good for your skin and hair and nails, because it's full of collagen and all the amino acids that you need, but it really helps with your digestion as well. From someone who's suffered from IBS in the past, um, and also rosacea, I have very sensitive rosacea skin. Drinking bone broth has been a game changer for me. Every single day, at least one cup. What I didn't realize though, was that coffee was gonna have the opposite effect. So if you do suffer from skin issues and digestive issues, Cutting out caffeine can be a game changer. Your skin and your gut are connected. So what you put inside your body matters a lot. I really didn't think that cutting out coffee would have such a huge effect on my skin and digestion, considering I'd already cut out pretty much all of my other triggers. You know, I've been on this health and fitness journey for over 10 years, so I knew that I couldn't really have spicy foods, I couldn't have alcohol, sugar, and especially, processed foods. I'd eliminated all them and my skin had massive improvements, but since cutting out coffee as well, um, my skin just feels plumper and fresher and more glowing, which is something that I've probably struggled with, uneven skin tone and just really dry skin. Nothing else has changed in my lifestyle and my diet, so I'm still using the same cosmetic products that I use, so I don't know, I think there's something to it. Now obviously, I know coffee makes you poop, and so a lot of people think that that's a good thing, like it makes you regular, but I invite you to think about it in a different way. Yes, it makes the colon contract, it increases stomach acid, and it releases hormones that basically make you poop. But it's also a diuretic, it massively dehydrates you, but really, if you can't poop without coffee, something's wrong, girlfriend. Stick to the good stuff instead. Now, this was a surprising improvement from coming off coffee. My productivity actually increased, and that kind of makes sense, because coffee is one of the biggest culprits in disturbing our sleep. And now, you might think, oh, well, I drink coffee and I sleep fine, I sleep eight hours a day. But just because you sleep eight hours a day doesn't mean you're getting quality sleep. So if you're still waking up in the morning, foggy, fatigued, lethargic, and you really need a cup of coffee to wake you up, you're not sleeping well enough. Make no mistake, coffee is a drug. In fact, it's a psychoactive stimulant in the same category as nicotine, cocaine, and amphetamines. But people don't see it as a drug. It's so widely used across the globe. It's such a normal part of our culture that we don't question what it actually is. Caffeine is a pesticide that is produced by a plant. The point of that pesticide is to deter animals and mammals from consuming the plant. Plants don't want to be eaten. It's their only defense mechanism. When I quit coffee, I also found out this fact and it blew my mind. Coffee has a half-life of six to seven hours and a quarter life of 12 hours. Meaning if you have a coffee at midday, a quarter of that caffeine is still circulating through your brain at midnight. No wonder it affects our sleep so badly. According to this sleep expert, one cup of coffee decreased the quality of your sleep by 20%, which was essentially the equivalent of 15 years of aging.
And if you've watched my video, How to Get Rid of Muffin Top, you'll know how important sleep is. You wanna get that deep delta wave sleep because it's so restorative. That's where all of the fat burning and all of the muscle building and all of the rejuvenation happens. If you're drinking coffee, even one coffee up until midday, you aren't getting that quality sleep. Sorry to break it to you. And the problem is that it becomes a vicious cycle because the more you drink coffee, the more you need in order to keep yourself feeling awake and alive. And so it's this vicious circle where dependency really takes hold. Messing with your circadian rhythm is no joke. So if you have trouble with sleep or even just getting into shape, burning fat, building muscle, sleep is the best supplement you have and the coffee is probably putting a major spanner in the works. This is literally a stimulation addiction by dependence on coffee. Personally, I feel clearer, sharper, and more productive when I don't drink it. If you're interested in learning more about caffeine and what effect it has on your health, I highly recommend that you read the book Caffeine Blues by Stephen Chernisky. I think I'm pronouncing that right. This is just my opinion, having worked in the health and fitness industry for over a decade, and from my own personal experience, I think caffeine has a larger negative impact on a female health. It can contribute to anemia, as caffeine can block iron absorption. It can increase your PMS, headaches, migraines, it can mess with your birth control and not to mention that it also depletes your trace minerals so it's actually dehydrating you and I know people who love coffee will defend it by saying that it's really high in antioxidants and therefore it's healthy for you and of course that it makes you regular which we've covered earlier but all plants have antioxidants in them that doesn't mean all of them should be consumed so for me, I just thought, is it really worth it? And plus, I can get my antioxidants from other healthier sources that don't give me all of the negative aspects that coffee does. And let me just put it out there that whatever minuscule amount of antioxidants you might get from one cup of coffee a day is absolutely negligent if your overall diet and lifestyle is poor. So like always, I sound like a broken record. Get your sleep, stress less, Get out in the sunshine, get into nature, move your body. That's how we get strong curves in all the right places and feel amazing too. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Are you ready to give up caffeine? I dare you to try it for at least 30 days and see how you go. There you go guys, thank you so much for watching. Ooh, and don't forget, go to the link in description, sign up for my app, limited discount offer running only this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you in another video. Bye.